Belle Van Zolen was aristocratic and down to earth. She was known as the goddess of the Netherlands and made famous by her words. But it was through music that she found true happiness. She is a fascinating product of her time. I'm your host, Elaine Sholley, and this is Stories by Lamedia Music Works. Belle van Zolen was born in 1740 to an aristocratic family of Dutch landowners. The family had deep roots in the region and was considered one of the most ancient, noble families in the Netherlands. Hmm. Her father, a rigid Calvinist, was kind, but not very imaginative, except when it came to his daughter. Your average aristocrat wasn't heavily educated but Belle's parents indulged her to study whatever she wanted. Literature, music, science, math, animal husbandry, you name it, she had a tutor for it. Her favorite subject was music, and she pushed hard for more of it. She studied the harpsichord, composition, lute, harp, and no doubt tortured her parents with a recorder, just like kids today. She must have been an exhausting child, always asking questions, never letting anyone rest. Her brothers, on the other hand, were, well, I'm sure they were very nice. They were men's men, spending their time riding horses, hunting, and playing cards. Learning was meh to them. But Belle was not a boy and liberal education or not, girls were to be seen and not heard. The Enlightenment may have opened minds, but nobility was still in its let them eat cake phase. And Miss Bell loved to shock people. She was beautiful. Young men hounded her. Hey, how you doing? But they were also <gasps> afraid of her. I'm scared. She had no filter, saying whatever came to mind. The ladies didn't like her either. Hmm. You know, bad manners. Nevertheless, Belle lived honestly and was just fine having few friends. At 22, Belle published her first novel, The Noble. In it, she ridiculed the upper class, calling out their excesses and ignorance. While Belle was careful to publish this book anonymously, her identity was soon revealed. It wasn't received well. In a panic, her parents rushed to buy every available copy and through some savvy string pulling, they stopped any further printing. In the aftermath, it was decided that she should probably get married. While many suitors came to call, one by one they were deemed too poor, too boring, too old, or even too young. One pompous admirer assured her father he was aware of Belle's unreasonable nature, but he was positive he could guide her along the right path. Belle had a good laugh about that. That's not to say she didn't want to get married. She saw marriage as a way to gain freedom, but she also knew a suitable husband might not approve of her activities. And she also wanted to marry for love. After a few years lying low, Belle carefully tiptoed back into creative life, making her first attempt at a career in music. She adapted her scandalous first novel into an opera libretto and arranged for a performance at the Théâtre Français in The Hague. This was an exciting first step and a huge accomplishment, but Belle knew the critics wouldn't be kind and left her name off the program. Belle may have been influenced by what happened to her friend Lucie Bouillet, who died shortly after publishing her first play. Lucie's play was ripped apart by friends and critics alike. It's likely she took her own life. Belle may have seen this as a warning. At the ripe old age of 31, she married Charles Emmanuel du Charlier, a mathematician and her brother's former tutor. He was a kind, sweet man who had no title whatsoever, and he wasn't wealthy. What he was was a ticket out of her family's home. 
Fortunately, her husband was supportive and encouraged her to write. They settled in Switzerland near Neuchâtel. From then on, she wrote under the name Isabelle de Cherrier. Things were a little awkward for the young couple in the beginning. They shared a house with her in-laws, who were not too pleased with the situation. They had been plagued with anonymous letters attacking them and Belle because of her book. To save face, she once again kept a low profile. Just a few years later, Belle inherited a vast amount of wealth. A good portion was tied up in colonial businesses like the Dutch West India Company. She managed her investments in a way that allowed her to follow her conscience and continue to write and compose. In her letters, she writes how music pierces her every being, elevating the soul, and she happily let it take over her life. The first order of business? Find a good teacher, Niccolò Zingarelli. She spent six to eight hours a day practicing on her piano, sometimes till midnight, and she had a renewed interest in opera. Knowing full well she was considered an amateur, Belle started out by collaborating with other composers to write pasticci operas, a popular genre where multiple composers submit songs for one show. This was a smart move. Women composers had to be genius level to make a mark, and Belle was behind. After all, she wasn't a flashy young prodigy like Elizabeth Jacquet Delaguerre. <clears throat> she didn't even live in a major city. She lived in a small town far from Paris. Nevertheless, she kept at it. Belle reached out to anyone within the music world who would listen. She even sent a libretto to Mozart in the hopes he would compose an opera with it. Mm. Yeah. While her shows were picked up by theaters, time and again they were dropped. The problem? For the French, she was too Italian. For the Italians, she was too French. Well, yeah, she lived in Switzerland, guys. Plus, there was the French Revolution. This was a time where opera was the last thing on people's minds. Belle wrote, people are screaming more than singing. She begged nobles to bend to democratic reforms. Instead, many decided to flee. And Belle doesn't mince words describing them. For her, they seemed unable or really unwilling to adapt. They didn't accept the role they played in their own downfall. And for Belle, that was unredeemable. Her novel, Trois Femmes, highlights the repressive backlash women suffered as a result of the revolution. Any progress made was quickly undermined. So much so, it became necessary for authors and composers to publish their work anonymously. This was the only way to get their art out there. Meanwhile, Belle continued to work on her music. Like many artists, she was fortunate to have a calling to retreat to in times of chaos. She was prolific in her musical output and gave the world six minuets for string quartet nine piano sonatas, and ten airs and romances. 